All right, Steve, we are back with another episode of the work week after hours. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. And you know, I thought uh, I got a lot of energy today and uh, a lot of the energy is coming from just the groundswell of attention that our the topic of our last episode continues to draw this whole better dot com, which a lot of people are, are renaming on Twitter better dot not <laughs> for just an egregious uh, example of you know how a massive reduction in force transpired and all around. Yeah. So I want to go. I want to roll around in this a little bit more because there's just I think a, a ton of lessons that we could learn from this. Um, and I also want to share, and I want to invite you to kind of pull out of me in this episode, having done so many office closures, uh, layoffs, thousands of, of people at, at Cisco. I was part of a team that we let 8,000 people go after the dot-com bubble burst at Cisco. And there's lots of different ways to, to go about it. But but uh, but yeah, bro, I mean, yeah. you're seeing a lot of this stuff too play out, right? Just unbelievable stories that we're learning now behind the scenes. Yeah, let's um, let's dive into it, and um, you know we can. I think it's I think it's fair. We can even talk about some of the good things that we noted. That you know how I mean there there are some good things that still happened, um, right. you know, and um, you know uh, what we I think one of the big things I got I know I know you've shared with me some of the feedback you've gotten is um, how I, th I think another good thing for us to talk about that kind of ties into this is how this is a reflection to what maybe not on the on such a grand scale but what many people have dealt with are dealing with in i mean the title of our last episode is bad bosses right yeah. and they they've they've had some bad leadership and mm -hmm. i know a big part about what you and i are working towards doing in the world of work is creating a a better way to do things Right. And, 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 and we talk a lot about, you know, you know, there's things you reference about, you know, hiring people to, you know, and train them to leave or, you know, compensating them for the value they bring, not how long we talk a lot about the front end of things. Mm -hmm. I think just as much on the exit, because everybody exits a job, every person exits a job, even if it's only your first job, you eventually leave you retire or something everyone leaves a job and i think i think i think we can dive into some ideas and some thoughts on that as well so um yeah. I, I know um this has really hit a nerve if you will from you um you're you do have some experience in this right. world right right you do have some experience building a pre-ipo company um, that is on the same journey that better.com when you, when you joined LinkedIn, they had 400 and so employees and, and you were there and kind of laid out That's a right. culture to get them to 4,000. Mm -hmm. Why did this hit a nerve so bad for you? Like what, what, what yeah. stung? I, I think it is when you build a career and, uh, in this field of human resources and you spend time, building your muscle memory and your pattern recognition and you see something that could have been avoided on so many fronts. I mean, there wasn't just one misstep. There were hundreds of missteps in this one. Uh, it just, it, it's like nails on a chalkboard running again and again. And I just can't handle it. It's like, there's like an organ rejection inside of me of what I had a front row seat to see. And you know, as we talked about in other episodes during the pandemic, I mean, when times are tough is when you really see the true colors of leadership. And this is a moment. And to be fair, okay, let's cover off some of the things like, okay, I was pretty harsh on a post I, I threw up there on, on LinkedIn this week. And, and I have no, uh, I have no regrets about that. However, it is fair to say no one goes to school to lay off, to prepare to lay off 900 people or to cut. 10% of your workforce or, you know, it's there, there've been different views of, I mean, he said 15% and then later was a 9%. Nothing really prepares you for that. And the good news is the top leader should own this. Uh, and that's what uh, Vishal Garg did. He stood in front of everyone um, and thought he was prepared 
and um, unfortunately was really exposed for a number of things. It wasn't just the what happened and how it happened. It was all the architecture behind that that I think really reveals some really interesting choices that uh, that the company made. And and I think to answer your 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 initial question, like why has this really gotten under your skin so much? Is you know, yeah, it's it's 900 people, it's 900 families, 900 lives that really it didn't need to go that way. I mean, even if you're going to let those people go, there are so many other ways you could have done it. And in a more fluid world of work, which we've talked about and I talk about in my book, everyone you're letting go is an ambassador for or against your future. And they missed an opportunity to create ambassadors. And the best example of that, I think we talked about in our last episode, the way Airbnb let their people go during the pandemic, converted their whole recruiting team to an outplacement team. Like we've got your back. They took it. So people leaving were more loyal to Airbnb because of how they managed that. And here I guarantee you, they did not build loyalty on people that were let go. They, they stigmatized them. You're low performers. You're stealing from the company. Um, and then they just shut the door in some cases, in, in too many, one is too many, but in several cases, People weren't even on the call because they were talking to customers when this thing went down. And all of a sudden, the, the phone disconnects. <laughs> their, the system that they're using to track with the customer is gone. That's harsh. That is yeah. really uh, – that is not the way that you want people tasting this really awful thing that you have to do. And, and that Airbnb method in today's climate for talent could have been really low-hanging PR fruit. I got, I mean, unfortunately, sometimes that's what goes into account. They could have easily placed a decent number of these folks or given them really hot leads at other places looking to hire talent right now because there's such a, that's right. They could have leveraged some of the resources that they have. Let me share with you something that LinkedIn does. And I I think I must've said an earlier episode, when you leave LinkedIn, you have a pro account for the rest of your working life. That is a, what is it? So, on the open so share with slide. people maybe who may not be aware who are listening to this, who maybe don't understand why that's beneficial. Okay. Well, and, and pro can may be easier for them to do than what better can, can do for, for departing people. But a pro account is unlimited access to the real, you know, deep parts of what LinkedIn can offer for people. Like the free system is very good. There's a ton of great stuff, but when you get the pro account, you don't have to be connected to someone to do research on them. Um, and so your access is the entire network and deeper insights and deeper reporting that you can do. And I have that for no cost. It's just, and it's just a software code they have got to do and say, okay, we're not going to cut him off. That's it. There's no cost. Yeah. Uh, but the, but man, that means a lot to me. That's a lot. But, and, but, but one of the things that I've heard you talk about with just openly, the openly it talks is caring about people when they come to a place for the lifetime of, of their journey. Right. We, we all know my son right now is trying to get his first job. He got offered a job at McDonald's yesterday. Doesn't know if he's going to take it. They're willing to hang around and you know, whatever. But, um, but he was like, well, what if I don't, like, what if I get a be- like a better place? And I was like, that's okay. Like, there's a way you handle it. You put in your two weeks. There's a way you yeah. do that. Um, but they know you're not going to be there forever. They know you're not going to retire mm-hmm. there. And he, mm-hmm. even for him, as a 15-year-old kid, is like, yeah, but wouldn't they? And I said, well, I'll explain it to you when it happens. Like, we'll, we'll talk more yeah. about it when it happens. But, <laughs> but, but in, like, like you said, and like your initial reaction was maybe they couldn't do it. They they can't do it in a way like LinkedIn does with their pro account. But I actually want to push back on that a little bit. Okay. Because they're taking $1.5 billion in investment funds. I'm listen, I am not, I am, I am a social capitalist, I guess, if you want to give it a term, I am all for making money. I'm all for success. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Why? And we hear, and I hear you talk about this a lot of companies say we're people, we're people first. We are people first. Well, something that a people first company could do could put an exit strategy program, university, 
alumni support, something in place so that things like this never happen and so that people feel like, okay, I lost my job. That's part of my journey. It sucks. But now here's these things that this company is giving me access to, even if it was my fault, even if I underperformed, even if I, these different things, because it's not personal. It's not personal. Right. And, and, and the, 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 the misstep here, particularly in better's position, which is a business to consumer offering. Mm -hmm. Yes. 900 people who could be consumers who could be advocates for their friends and family. That's a universe of, I mean, hundreds of thousands of people that those 900 people are touching. You didn't say, you know what? We're going to give you access to below market rates for the next two, three, five years. In fact, there was one couple, it was reported, both working there, two weeks away from closing, and the company ripped away their discounted mortgage. <laughs> I mean, you can't do worse stuff than that. And, and it's not costing you a whole lot. You're not losing a lot of money. You're making a choice that um, we're going to possibly, I'm putting words in, in potentially what's happening yeah, in the inner We're assuming of some things. Planning yeah. this, right? Like we're expecting, and this is very common. A lot of leaders think that when I let someone go, they're going to be scorched earth, going to sabotage my systems and wreak all kind of havoc and have an emotional outburst that is going to be harmful to our work environment, our coworkers, our systems, risk, risk, risk. So what we're going to do, and this is usually the lawyers that are saying this is cut, cut, cut. And what better did was play to the ultimate, 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 you know, legal Beer. protection. And we're not going to do anything humane at all in, in how we're going to soft land the message. We're not going to prepare managers to have conversations with people. We're not going to let anyone know what's happening because we fear if we do that, probably word's going to leak. And if things leak, oh, it's going to be really poor. But not preparing anyone, people are shocked. And they just had a week, a week or a few days before all this good PR and all this good news pumping up the valuation of what their you know investment dollars could be. Um, and, and so they didn't do that. You know, and they probably they shut everyone's systems down right away. You don't have to do that. That's your choice. You know, that's so, your choice. And people will always remember yeah. the negative stuff and not remember the good stuff. And now you left be bitter is not even the right word here. It's worse than bitter taste in those mouths. Um, trauma. Some of them are traumatized. Some of them, yeah. you know, there, yep. there's some things. So um, you've hired quite a few people in your time, right? Have you fired a few people? Have you let some people go? Have you <laughs> departed from some people? I, in the balance scorecard of Steve's hire versus have to let go, the let goes are way more than the hired. Way okay. more. I would probably say maybe three to one, unfortunately, because the time that I've worked in the workforce was the, you know, a recession of, you know, probably sort of like the late 90s. Then there's the dot com bubble bursting, uh, which was a big, and then it was 2008. Yeah. Uh, when the uh, second mortgage crisis hit. So yeah, I've been through a bunch of those. So you, you've obviously, you've made your fair share of missteps and mistakes. And I think that's where, I think okay. I hope our listeners get, that's where some of this also comes from is you've, there's, there's, there's a lot of value in your experience. And obviously it's why people bring you in. Some of that value is by making mistakes. I would say, I, actually, I know you, so, a lot of that value is by making mistakes over the time. And that's actually where we actually get value in our knowledge of trying things and it failing. And then we figure it out. So when you speak on this, it's not a, it's not from a, a holier than now place of that it's, Hey, I get it. I understand I've been there. And so, so without placing blame, what are some of the things that could, and, and it's not like, like when I hear you talk about this family who was two weeks away from a mortgage, uh, like that, explain, I, don't, I, I wasn't aware of that. So can you, they, they get access to something, they get access to better mortgage rates or something like that? As my, um, as I understand it, one of the perks you had as a better.com or have as a better.com employee 
is access to below market interest rates. Maybe gotcha. it's just a quarter point or sure. a fraction of a point less. So that's your benefit. That's our business. And we know we're already offering, you know, really good rates. We're going to offer you an even better one because you're an employee, right? Yeah. So it's on brand. That's very, it's very that's on right. brand. Uh, so, right. so instead of doing a big mass zoom call, if there's a more personal touch to this, to understand the, the human that potentially could have been avoided, right? That, that potentially maybe would have come up in conversation of, Hey, by the way, okay, you're letting us go. What about this that we've got coming up yeah. or what? And Okay. So this is really good because, um, and again, it's not, it's, these things are never perfect. As we said in the last episode, sure. there's no good ways of letting people go. There's sure. only better ways of letting people go. And so what we don't know are some behind the scenes factors. You're balancing financial PR brand. Okay. And I really believe that employer brand is very close to consumer brand. How you treat your people, I think impacts what people think of you as a place that they want to spend their money or invest their money in. What we don't know is the timing of this. And I don't know what their financial calendar year is, but my guess is that was pretty tight to the date of the announcement because they need to lock in for financial reasons. We're going to do this so that we can have a crap quarter <laughs> right off all this, you know, loss and all the expense that we're going to have to do with a severance we have to do a WARN Act. Whenever you let more than, I think it's 50 people go, you usually have to let the government know. So you have to file a notice, increasing the possibility that there's going to be a leak somewhere if you have a, um, to, to, to notify people. So they're balancing, man, we don't want to leak. We've got some kind of financial requirement to record this official event. And we need people off the books a certain time so that we're gonna, our numbers are going to look better. And since they're not a public company, those numbers, who they who do they need to look better for? Their investors. investors. Yeah. Investors. It may need to be for the current investors or it may need to be for the next investors. This brings up a whole nother a uh, whole, you know, treasure, if you will, of new kinds of issues, Shane, such as what do investors really care about? And what's the horizon of their care? Yeah. Apparently, I don't know that investors are really getting the insight like, hey, what are you going to tell the people? You're going to give them severance? You're going to really screw this up so that but, you're going to look like a should they? But right. should they? But should they? Right. I, I, some of them probably should. And the most, the most significant investors usually are sitting on the board. Okay. But the board doesn't always know the dynamics or the details of what kind of notice are you giving people? What kind of benefits are you giving them? What kind of you know offerings are you going to make? Unless, in the case of Airbnb, they accelerated vesting for employees. That is a costly, it's called a compensation charge. Whenever you're going to give someone something, you're going to have to pay for it on your balance sheet. If you're accelerating, say, six, nine, 12 months of vesting, that's not free. That's costing you something. And Airbnb said, oh, yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to do a whole bunch of other things. Um, and so, you know, they, they skip through that, but that does, it does beg the question when I'm looking at investors. So there's seed investors, right? A round, B round, C round, D round. And there's usually an exit after the D under the normal course. Those time frames are not multiple years. Most of the time they're one to two years between those phases. Okay. So you've got maybe eight to 10 years and someone's going to have an exit. So what does an investor care about the next two years, right? And so I think what my guess is, and the CEO and the people closest to CEO making this decision are, the most important thing is we're going to need to cut costs here because that's the most important thing that's driving our realization of more investment value. Yeah. And we don't think, or we don't pay attention to, or we forgot, or we didn't care that the PR hit on this one for all the people who are creating value in the freaking company who are watching a horror show play out and seeing massive disregard for their coworkers, many of whom they thought were really great people, and whether they're high performers or not, you don't treat people like that. They're going, whoa, who have I just signed up for? And they don't – that wasn't part of the calculus, I think. And they could have done so many other things. You could have said, okay, we're going to give you 90-day notice. 
We're going to give you, we're going to pay you 90 days. We're going to hire an outplacement firm that's going to have your back and market the crap out of you to get another job. You're going to have for the rest of your lifetime access to the best that we can offer. You know, we are going to, you know, promote you and hire this firm to market you to help you raise your LinkedIn um, profile. None of that. None of that. And a lot of that stuff doesn't cost anything, just well, sort of and the, that's, and, the goodwill and that's, effort. And that's what I was going to get into. How You have developers on site. How hard would it be? And you can go to your legal and say, okay, everybody who we fire can opt into this and we'll create a database for all these recruiters. You know all the recruiters. You know all the companies that are out here looking for people. And we'll give you access to this database so you can go in and set up on point it, that that would literally take 24 hours for a team that has that much tech talent it, it, w it would not be hard to do and i think it that's be hard to do it wouldn't be hard to say and we're going to have our whole hr team coach you we're going to have sessions around you know how to interview more effectively how to do all this yeah nothing so why can't a bit, so 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 what are the i don't think there are any downsides but maybe every business should do that we're going to keep a database that you can you can subscribe to as a as a recruiter or other businesses can tap into and we update it every 30 days of talent that we've parted ways with that, that right. we parted not left us but that we parted ways with so that way we, what, what where where why would we not do that you know like like because we are still think this is why <laughs> You, you see what I'm saying? Read my book, Shane. You've obviously read my book because people are only thinking about the employee as in yeah. you are yeah. only a a a source in the universe that has value to me when you're here. When you're not here, you have no value to my universe, and that's just flawed. It's just yeah. flawed because so, you know. And so that that's why they're thinking about that. Like I'm going to cut you. I'm going to cut you off. I'm, I'm, I'm worried that any sort of longer relationship in any capacity to help you is going to be a distraction for my business. So you're yeah. out. Yeah. Complete so, divorce. So you divorce, you just said the word. Okay. So on paper, I won't go into my story. I have two ex-wives, right? I have a great relationship with both of them and I care about both of them. Even still today, if I've helped them out in times when, not that they need my help, but there's been life things that have happened where, you know, I could help. Um, I would argue leaving a job is not anywhere near the emotional break that a divorce is. So if, if, if human, and, and a lot of humans do that, right? A lot of humans have, like, figure it out, right? You co-parent, you figure it out, right? Like, you don't have to agree. Look, you're going to go your life, I'm going to go my life, but... We're going to like, we're going to be there to, I'm not help you Adele. I just watched this special on Adele and she talks about how she went through a divorce and this album she just put out her husband her ex-husband lives across the street. Right. And they talk every day and she's like, oh yeah, I told him this was coming out and he heard the songs and like, if we can do that, the rock Dwayne Johnson just posted, he's in business with his ex-wife, his ex-wife manages all of his business all of his corporations, all of his acquisitions, all that. If we can figure out that compassion part of the most intimate relationship that can happen as humans, there's surely the goodness if we're a company and, and, and look, I get it. If you're a company that says we don't give a shit about our employees, we're money first. If you don't like it, there's the door. I don't give a shit. Don't talk to me. We're not going to complain. That's cool. That's cool. Then that you are, I am glad Then some people will sign up for that. But if you're a company that says, Hey, we care about our people as simple as putting a database of people you've departed to give them one more resource for places, because there's other mortgage companies right now that are probably looking for people. Don't make it harder for them. Like allow them to have access to them. Cause if they're not good enough for you, why do you care if they go somewhere else? And Shane, they didn't just let them go harshly. They let them go and said, most of these people, it's because of their performance. Yeah. And, and publicly <laughs> so said that harder. And, and publicly said closed. that. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah. Exactly. So, so you took it so personal as if you've never worked somewhere and you slacked off as if right. you in the middle of a pandemic, right. In the middle of people figuring out working remote in <laughs> all of this, are you freaking kidding me? I know. How about hire somebody? And this is the thing. And I, I don't, I don't want to come from a soapbox, but kind of circling this back to the investor piece of it. I don't want to villainize investors. Investors do, um, they, they are a cog in the wheel that causes America to be the great place that it is. I truly believe that. How much would it cost them? And I'm, maybe it's going to come off sound biased because I'm your agent, mm -hmm. but for the love of all that is holy, how much would it actually, how much, ROI would they actually lose if they came in and Cadigan Talent Ventures was on staff and every 90 days we came in and we sat down and you walked through their new companies that they acquired and helped outline, make sure certain things were placed and then not did the mentoring for them, but made sure that the right people, because some people need help with this guy has obviously a self-awareness that is missing. So he needs someone, he needs a coach in the HR world. That's a, a, a genius, a wizard with, with self-awareness to talk to him and be around and be there for him and help him with empathy. Right. Not everybody needs it. Some people have that and they don't have the logistical side of it, or mm -hmm. they don't have, you know, these different things. We're talking about companies with billions of dollars. Would it really matter on their balance sheet if they had things like that set in place? Right. And by the way, the tax treatment for separation benefits is very favorable. You're not, it's not like a massive cost. You're going to get a real tax benefit if you're trying to help your people bridge. That's what severance is for. A lot of people don't realize this. Like, this is not like a gratuitous payment. This is a severance is money that you can have to help you through the time it's going to take you to get another job. In Canada, where I worked, it's pretty interesting. They have a, almost like a formula. And so there's not a lot of lawsuits because we just know what the formula, based on your level, length of service, what you quit to join there, and maybe if you got relocated, here's the number. That's the number. You got to write that number. You write that check. It's all good. There is no, I was, you know, I'm going to sue you because of some sort of, you know, feeling like I was uh, discriminated against. Uh, there's different approaches, but I find it really interesting that 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 approach that they took was just so abrupt, and it's just so ignorant to. There's an opportunity here for us to benefit, you know. And they were they were scared. They're playing defense. I don't know that anyone who touched this has ever done this before, even at a small scale, because there's so many so many you know uh, violations. Having let so many people go, I will tell you something. Uh, let you in a little bit on a, uh, something that surprised me early in my career, having to let people go. Most of the times you think, oh, they're going to go in there and they're going to plant a bug in the system. They're going to shut this thing down. They're going to go scorch earth. They don't. They feel awful. And they feel embarrassed. And they're thankful that you give them the time to pack their office up, to say goodbye to people, to have goodbye lunches. You know, give them a few weeks at minimum to do that and give them the choice. Like, hey, we're going to keep you on for a couple of weeks. You don't have to come in. And then you say, hey, what would you like us to tell people? You know, uh, you, you know, do you, you know, how do you, how do you want this to do just like, and they'd not even oh. given people the dignity of that. And so yes. there's so many, so many things. And I was surprised have time and time again. I went, my first office I had to close. I was a junior HR rep. They sent me to Cincinnati to meet with the, the office managers, a fireman's foot insurance company. We're shutting down the whole office. And I was the guy from headquarters. And I was like, oh, they're going to hate me. I sat down with the, the business manager, we scripted, okay, this is what you're going to say. This is what I'm going to say. And I'm going to meet with every single employee and say, this is what the company is going to offer you. It wasn't off the charts. Great. It wasn't, but like, do you have any questions? Do you have any concerns? Do you have any sort of special, you know, um, things that you're afraid of? What can we help you with? And we were, you know, outplacement, uh, severance, um, you know, helping bridge their, um, medical benefits for an extended period of time. I had half of those people say, I'm so sorry you had to do this. This must really be awful for you. I'm like, no, 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 don't worry about me. And they're counseling me 
They're like, can't believe the company had to send you to go do this. We know it's not your choice. We know it's not your decision, but thank you for taking the time to explain all that, you know? And that was, that blew me away. But that's, but that's, a, that's what a good culture. So a good culture means people do want to stick around and say goodbye. A good culture means they do want to be. So it's almost like a conundrum you put yourself in when you're, when you go against, if you have a, I don't know, I have no idea what kind of culture better.com, zero. Right. But if they have a good culture, you just traumatize those people even more because their whole time there, all you did was reinforce, reinforce, reinforce unity and loyalty and respecting each other and serving each other and these different things that we all say. And then you yank it right out from underneath them. And, and what good does it serve a company to say we let you go and, 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 and make a negative connotation or remark about that person that, that doesn't benefit the, 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 the company that's letting you go in any fashion. It doesn't make you look any, that, like that means you're concerned about ego really, really bad, really, yeah. really bad. And that's why they, they deserve what, the, what, what they're going to get. And it's unfair, you know, I, not every, there's a, probably a ton of great people in that company. I'm sure. No doubt. They no just doubt. had a cold shower and they just woke up and go, I don't know that I want the stench of this on my career. Like, I don't know that, I don't know that I want that, but here's the, here's the problem. There's a lot of other actors, Shane, that are all part of this whole show. And yeah. Forbes is one of them best company to work for in some category, you know, because measured by, by what I think we all know now based on what, based on, the revenue ramp yeah. and the investors that they had. That's yeah. what that was based on. Yeah. I mean, the company's so young, like, and they grew like crazy. So they're all assuming in the hottest housing market, great. maybe ever. Yeah. Right. Assuming, Oh, it must be great. Well, your list doesn't mean anything now. Do, do we see a, 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 anything from Forbes? Oh, sorry. Our bad. You know, we really, we really stuffed that one up. No, they're not saying anything about it. That's a whole nother. And people are looking at those lists going, huh, best company to work for. Must be a good place to go. Well, there's 900 people now. And, and many of the other people who are still at better are going, no, nope, those lists don't mean anything. Yeah. And I always knew that they didn't mean anything. Yeah. Uh, but now they really are exposed as part of the problem. Like this isn't, don't, don't look at that stuff. You know, yeah. don't yeah. look at that. That's not, yeah, it. that's not the, that's not the gaze. And it goes back to a suggestion I had of if a company actually wants to show how good you are as a company, then actually show, hire somebody to follow you around and actually show you, show you how good it is. And I, right. you know, I, yeah, I, and I think people, so Gen Y, you know, G, uh, millennials and Gen Z, I guess it is that, that are get this and gen x they get this bad rap of oh they're not loyal children who become 18 years old for the last 15 years have had more knowledge about the world at 18 years old than in any generation in history because of access to things like the internet so they are more informed they're more educated they're more aware. They've seen the BS. They've seen people playing games. They've seen people being mistreated. They're not soft. They're just educated. They're looking at it like, no, nah, that's not going to work for me. I'm not going to go. Nope. You're not going to talk to me like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Nope. You're not going to treat me like that. Um, and that's okay. I think accountability is a great thing. I had a couple people when they saw your post, they know our relationship and they saw your post and they were like, Hey man, like you might want to talk to Steve. Like that post might not be a great idea. And I was like, I've already seen it, brother. I was like, I, I got no issue with it. How come? Well, because accountability is a good thing. Like I, I I'm willing to, I'm willing to die on the hill of accountability. Right. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I get to partner and work with somebody who's willing to do that as well and do it in a respectful way. I'm I'll champion that a hundred times out of a hundred. And well, let me share something with you, Shane, that I haven't shared with you, which is really okay. interesting. I have probably about 15, 20 people who've come offline and said, Whoa, that was really brave. Thank you for doing that. Didn't say it on LinkedIn. Don't want to have anything to do 
with, cause I'm coming after some people with that. Like this is no, this is intolerable. And then don't you dare come to me, big company and say, why are people leaving jobs fast? You know, why are people not as loyal? Really take a look at the, you know, um, you got the Uber story. You got yeah. this one, you got the story, bad blood, Elizabeth Holmes and what she did. Like there, and, and there's other people out there. There's other well, companies we've had that some, are doing stuff like this right now, you know? Yeah. And, so, and at the time of, at the time of us recording, some of you may be familiar with the unfortunate tornado accident and event that occurred here oh, in Kentucky yeah. in, in, in my hometown. And there's two things that have started to come out um, about two locations of employment that were impacted one i mean it one they're both grave situations no matter how many people passed away so they're 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 both very very serious situations one was a candle factory uh where it sounds like 150 170 or so people were working it looks like there's 200 and some people employed there um they used uh work release labor so some of the employees working at this factory at the time the tornado hit were inmates and you know people in the correctional system um but at, at the candle factory for example it's come out that the sirens started going off and, and for those of you that are unfamiliar with this if you just type in mayfield candle factory before and after photos you'll see what the building looked like and now it looks like a, um a landfill essentially that's they got flattened and wow. uh, it's come out that these there were employees that said hey i'd like to go home i i'd like to leave they were told by a supervisor now whether or not this is the company's policy or not maybe that 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 uh um uh that supervisor was just concerned for his job security if people weren't working and you know whatever i, I don't know i'm not going to place it on the company necessarily but it builds to a greater issue. They were told, well, if you leave, you may not like, you're probably like, you're probably not gonna have a job next week. So let me give you a little bit more context. This is a town of 9,000 people. You either work at this factory or you work in the school system and that's, or you got a restaurant job or something. That's really it. It's not a lot. So imagine you working somewhere in a very low income area, let's say they're paying 15, $20 an hour and you're working there. My guess is that's probably not what they're paying and you're working there and Christmas time's coming around the corner. You just had Thanksgiving. There's been a pandemic. So you probably were even out of work for a while. So bills have probably backed up. You probably got some rent payments past due. You probably got some mortgage payments past due and your boss just told you that you have to make a decision to stay here because the only employment you're essentially going to have, that's going to help you pay those bills is here. Or you can go home and do what you need to do because the next two and a half, three hours that you put in, in this factory is more valuable than your life and your peace of mind and your safety. And I realize that probably is really, really harsh. I'm from Kentucky. I've been here. We get tornado warnings all the time. Mm -hmm. So I get it. Maybe they didn't think it was that serious, but that's what they were told. And there's been numerous employees. One employee was going to leave. Then finally made the decision and said, okay, I think I'm going to leave anyway. Walked out the door, saw the tornado, closed the door, laid down in the fetal position concrete fell on him he got sucked out of it on top of the roof lived survived <sighs> his co-workers didn't wow. all because and i and i realize hindsight is 2020 and it and it makes me a little bit emotional i'm from here it's been a really really emotional time for us the last three or four days but to tell somebody that they matter like their time here so you can profit the owner owns, again, she's very successful. I, I'm not going to release her name because I do know of who they are. Very yep. successful, multiple means of mass transportation, privately owned. They're very, they're okay. Okay. So you've created a culture 
that is essentially telling people your maybe you didn't tell them that, but your culture created an environment that that supervisor felt like that's what they that's how they were trained or that's what they were made to feel. Only one of two ways. That's right. That's right. And I can't like that's like the most extreme version of it of what can happen. Um, but to make people feel like you don't matter. People have been saying it for a long time. I can only imagine Steve working in your field and people find out you're in HR and they're like, oh, yeah, you guys really give a shit about us. Like, oh, yeah, you don't care about us. Th things like this are why. Things like better.com are why. Mm -hmm. When do yeah. I actually matter? You, you beat the drums with it and I'm right there hitting the tambourine with you on a regular basis about it. If we're going to be a people first company, act like it. Because we talked, you were talking earlier, and I didn't want to cut you off, but you talked about the investment, these companies. I'm going to ask you a question. Um, and maybe you can or can't talk about this. Did you guys, did you guys have a funding round at all while you were at LinkedIn before you went IPO or had that already kind of occurred and happened before? Yeah, there was a okay. funding round. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you guys went in and you needed to hire out a bunch of people, did they consult or give you any kind of ideas or put you in place or give any kind of any kind of cover on saying, "Hey, we need to hire seven hundred people in the next this time period"? Here, you know, let's help you put a game plan together. What was there? Do you see what I'm asking? Like, was there was that was the investors you're talking about from anybody? Yes. Yeah. No. No, yeah. no, there were, they, the investors saw that we had a opportunity to do something really, really big. And they really believed that we could realize it. And there was different points of view around different product lines and how we could grow and what the, what the pace was. But that was the, what it was interesting for, for, for this, for the sake of this discussion was enormous, enormous fear of growing too fast. Um, and this was the, I joined right after it was early, it was early. Yeah, I joined right after 2008 and the company had let some people go for the first time in the history of the company. And that was really hard and everyone remembered it like it was yesterday. And that was in, in part because of one of the, the venture firms, Sequoia had sent a scorch earth, throw jewelry overboard. It's going to be a nuclear winter. And they expected all their invest, their portfolio companies to let people go. Uh, and some people said, oh, it's a bad performer purge or whatever. Um, and th this is the thing that, you know, in in defense of this whole thing at Better, having been in the kitchen when LinkedIn was growing, I mean, you're going, it's like a Cub Scout, those, those uh, you know, races that they have with those little like, hey, we're going to put these cars together and see who can go the furthest. It felt like we were going 100 miles down a hill was something that with you know super glue and paper clips you know like stuff's not cooked and it's changed the company's changing so fast and yeah you've had to hire people that in retrospect man maybe we should have done a little bit more diligence and there's people who are a little bit out of position out of place but that's on us right as a company we're not blaming people like we hired them you know the way Better talks about it's like, well, that's your fault. You should have been better. Like, I guarantee you there were bad hires. Yeah, because when you grow that fast, it's an imperfect reality because a bunch of humans are doing stuff they've never done before, including the CEO yes, in his defense. Yes. He never, he's never built a company this big, this fast in this industry. It's all new. But you don't start blaming other people when things go sideways. You start saying, okay, we're going to go off of, of track a little bit here. And let's do it in humanely in a humane way because we're going to have to hire hundreds more people tomorrow, right? But there was never any guidance expectations from our investors that when I was there, like, hey, we're we're doing this so you can do this more than just general expansion, general investment and growth to give us more of a buffer, right? Yeah, yeah. Every company has no problem investing in sales. I think we all can agree on that. Every company doesn't have a problem investing in marketing. Every company probably could do better on investing in their people. And you, you cannot, you cannot. 
I, I don't know. I, I look at these things and they've happened and we've, you and I both are kind of tapped into tech stuff. So we're familiar with other stories and these things. I, what I hope, and I don't know, maybe this is just me being um, optimistic, I guess, but I hope maybe this incident is one, what I call caution, hot McDonald's coffee cup moment, right? Mm. Like we don't have to put something on there. You know, it's hot. Somebody had an accident. Somebody was hurt really bad. So now we have like, like we didn't know we needed to make like, like it, it, it wasn't like we didn't, we all know, right? Like it's like, we know, like we know mm. not to light a cigarette while you're while you're pumping gas, there doesn't have to be a sign there, but some people still do it anyway, you know, kind of thing. Right. Right. Like, like maybe this is the moment where people say, okay, we, we've got to figure this out. And, and there's so many things that can be done. That's why I'm so excited for next year. And some of the stuff we're working on, there's so many things that can be done that do not come off of your bottom line that you right. can do for your people and caring about your people. You know, I I want to, I want to, cause I know there's people from my end that aren't as in tune to the Silicon Valley world that listen to this and maybe they're not And every, and this applies to hospitals. This applies to schools. This applies to all places of business. Imagine, imagine if you had a, imagine if you helped somebody, I just told you about an employee who I had to let go. I closed my business down. I've stayed in touch. I've helped this employee with some personal stuff. I've helped this employee do some relationship stuff. I've helped this employee find a new place of employment after he could no longer work with me. I personally picked up the phone call and personally went to another location and sat down with that CEO and said, Hey, I think you need to hire this person. And now that person's having some advancements in their life and wanting me to be a part of them and those things. And there's so much, it didn't cost me anything. It cost me nothing other than to be a good human, to be a good human. And just because we're dealing with larger scale doesn't mean we can't be a good human. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean we can't. And you say it, I'm going to echo it. If you're going to say, if I'll even say it in a different way, if you're going to say you're going to be a people first business, show me better than you tell me, show me better than you tell me. I hope, I hope somebody listens to this. Cause I know we, we know the magnitude of some of the people who listen to this. We've seen some of the messages. Yeah. I yeah. hope somebody listens to this. And I hope we see something in this. Don't even have to give us credit. Neither one of us give a shit. We don't care. Mm -hmm. I hope yeah. some, I hope we see something where, oh, such and such company is now going to build out a departure database for recruiters and other companies, for companies, for people they've had to lay off or let go. We've given, you know, we've given them, it would literally in 24 hours, any company could have it up and going. HR can e legal, simple. Here's this last document of all the documents you got to send when you leave this one. Do you want to opt into our database so we can try to help you find a another place of employment? 99 out of a hundred people are going to say yes, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, it's these little things that we can do. It's we're not solving rocket science here. Right. And here's the thing that, that better obviously didn't understand, which is you're going to have more bumps in the road. What you're, what you want to build, and I, I just don't think the CEO gets it, and and obviously the people around him don't get it either. Is teams that win have two big components: trust and psychological safety. And you just drove a truck through those, and you will, you're there's people there that will never ever trust you again, ever, you know. And so, okay, that's what you just did. You just drove a truck through building trust and providing psychological safety so that everyone there knows when my number comes up, it's going to go down ugly. So I better look out for me. That's why when, you know, if anyone has any doubts about the angst that some people have towards leadership and big companies, just go look at my TikToks. Just go look at what the comments are there. Read the comments. A, yeah. 
there is a lot of angry stuff in the comments and people feeling victimized and belittled. And it's situations like this that just give them more ammunition to go, yeah, they don't care. And they clearly don't. But I think that's just such a big mistake. And I'm going to be so curious to see in the next two years how this plays out. And there's a lot of people, a lot of investors do not want this to fail because they got too much money in it. And there's a lot of employees that walked away from something else or we've bet big, we've got a lot of shares that don't want to go. So they're going to have to face the ethical trade-off of, okay, okay, do I want to hear in this? And I'm going to have to buy into the, the ugly culture that's obviously here or I'm going to have to vote with my feet and go somewhere else. That's what I'm so curious about because everyone's got difficult men. I, I've been stuck in places that I can't leave and I knew it was toxic for me uh, or some of my needs were being served. Like, Hey, my time, I left my last job too quickly. If I leave this one too quickly, this is not a good story. Well, guess what? Everyone at better has a story of why they left now. <laughs> no one can say, Hey, why'd you No, oh, oh, that's right. That's right. I remember that situation. You've all just been given a free pass to explain away why you left your company. So are people going to take that? I'm so curious to, to see how it's going to play out. Yeah. I tell you what would be really cool. Uh, Cause we've, we've, we've definitely shined the light on the negative side of things. Um, and the team who will clip this, who shares some of the clips out, this would be a good place to clip. Um, I think I'd love to actually see some great leaders, some good leaders. I want to hear some of the good leader stories that are out there. Because, you know, you and I can talk about this, but I think we can also now maybe shine the light on, like, this is why it's wrong. Then here's some of the things you can do. Here's right. some of the right. things you Let me give you an example. And this wasn't, this isn't, yeah, um, I don't know necessarily great leadership, but when you have a culture that's done right, this is how it could go. I'm sitting in Asia when SARS hits, okay? This is 2003 the first sort of quote early pandemic that we face in our lifetimes. And it's in started in uh, Guangzhou, China, which is just outside of Hong Kong. Yep. Yep. And it was, it was coming at us like a freight train. I'm living in Singapore at the time spreading throughout Asia. I have a bunch of English only speaking expats sitting in China with their families. And they're like, Hey, what's the company going to do? We need to get out of here. We feel we're fearing for our safety. And so I call headquarters. I go, okay, I'll get right back to you. I call headquarters. They're like, well, we're not sure. We'll have a meeting tomorrow. I was like, no, uh, I'm, I'm listening to these people. They're calling me. We need to do something right now. So, um, so they called back. They said, Steve, do what you think is right. I was like, okay. So I call the people back and say, if you feel, un <laughs> if you feel unsafe in China, get on a plane, and get your family out right now. Where should we go? That's up to you. We'll figure this out later. If you're fearing for your safety, like there are people there and, and uh, you know, I've spent a little time in China and you have too. There were some people who felt that it, because what China was doing was, and it was so interesting being in Singapore and seeing how China is handling it and how Singapore, Singapore is like, Hey, if you feel like you've got a flu, stay at home, we'll have doctors come to you and we'll bring you food. In China, it's like, if you if you're not well, we're going to take you and put you in this hospital over here, and no one's going to see you for a while. Yes, yes, and yes. so people, so and that caused the that caused the disease to spread because no one wanted to be in some, yeah. you know, uh, unknown hospital. And people were worried. My expats were worried. Their kids or them were going to be put somewhere, and they couldn't speak the language. Uh oh. So I'm like, get out, get out. And so so they did, and that was the culture of. People first decisions. If you don't feel safe, then you need to do what you need to do. We'll figure it out later. But you're not going to get fired for leaving your job. So, you know? so, so I'm, I'm, and I realize we're talking about you and the story, but there's the bigger piece to that is they trusted that you were telling them something that they could trust and not like they knew they could focus on their family and not be concerned about their family in a sense, if that makes right. sense. Right. So, yeah, I but that, mean, these things happen and, and, and that that's why we have culture, by the way. Yeah, we have culture. So when the unexpected, you know, situation sits, arrives at your front door, you don't have a chance to call someone. What is the governing way I should be thinking about this to move it in the right direction? Right. 
And that's why, I mean, I've done so many workshops on this from so many companies around the world. And, and so people are like, well, what, you know, what's the, what's a good culture? It's like good culture is one that someone kind of knows how this should play when they're lacking a playbook. Cause you can't playbook everything, right? Yeah. Oh. There's ethical challenges you're going to face. There's customers saying, you know, Hey, you or there's countries where you're not going to do business. So someone's going to get a bribe. And it's like, well, we can't do that because you know, I have CPA or, you know, yes, yes. FCPA, Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. Like, so when you're faced with these, how are you going to deal with it? And the good cultures are going to help equip people to navigate that in a way that's everyone's going to benefit from. Right. Yeah. No, I, I again, I, 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 you say there's never been a better time to be an individual contributor in the workforce than right now. You've had more leverage, more opportunities, more benefits, more everything, right? Yeah. There's never been a time than to be a company with a good employee brand in today's world. It, it's more important than ever, right? Some companies, we're going to look back, and you and I are going to, do a podcast episode three years from now, and we're going to look back and there are some companies that have a very well-known customer brand that are going to fail and not exist anymore just because they did not take care of their people. And, and I don't know, you know, I mean, I don't know if it's a South thing or an American thing, but you know, we're always told the customer's always right. The customer's always right. The cut it's, it's almost like we're brainwashed into thinking, the customer is the only person that matters, right? The customer is the only person at this business that matters, either subconsciously or whatever. I don't know, but maybe the, like they can both be true. The customer always matters. And so do my people, right? So, so do my people, meaning how would we react if, what, what would X comp how would X company react if all of a sudden one of these employees started getting like the customer called in and was making threats and different things to that employee? How would you react? Would you err on the side of the customer or would you protect that employee? Mm -hmm. So like, like we have to put these, th like, it, I, I don't like, it's almost, it's mind blowing the fact that we don't, have more things in place for people and it's not about being soft it's not about being snowflakes it's not about being weak it's not about being disloyal it's why is human decency up for debate and that i guess is what it all, I, I, maybe it's not that simple maybe i'm simplifying it but if i if you're willing to come however long that is six months, six years, 60 years, whatever you're willing to give this company, great. And I'm going to do everything I can to give you within the means of what we can do. And I realize better.com can do way more than the local mom and pop shop here. I realize mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. but it also doesn't like, it doesn't take like what kind of, there's no badge of honor in letting someone go and destroying their, confidence or and we're specifically talking about letting someone go but i think what's going to happen is more and more in interviews if i were in, if i were getting interviewed i would bring this up i would say hey what do you think I'd, I'd like to know your personal opinions on that whole better.com thing and you better have a real good freaking answer yeah. or yeah and, and don't, and because it's going to matter, right? Cause people understand, like, if you like, like, if you kind of defer like, well, you know, me personally, oh, so you're saying the company here wouldn't, I'm good. No, nope, that's okay. Thanks. Yeah. You, you can have it. I think that's going to start it's, happening. Yeah. It's really interesting to see how this is playing out now. So he's on a leave of absence or as they framed it, an immediate leave of absence, trying to show that they got real sense of urgency on this thing now. And it, both sides are like looking at the legal ramifications of anything that this could play out as, you know, and uh, who knows, who, who, who knows, but it's going to be, I'd be really, really, really surprised if he comes back to CEO or if he returns really surprised, but, and, and, and we'll that's see. sad. That's sad. Even for him, it's unfortunate. 
It's unfortunate mm-hmm. even for him. Like I like like he's definitely not a victim in this, other than he's maybe going to be made a scapegoat by some other people who could have, you know, right. had his back. Um, but you know, it would be it's no like I don't know you. I mean, I don't. I don't know. Like, I just know how I do things, right? Like, mm-hmm. how many multiple times and multiple occasions you find I have conversations and I'll say to you, I got your back. Like, it's good. I got, I got your back. Like, I'm good. Like, if we go down, we're going to go down together, right? Like, we're like this is what this is going to be, right? I'm not going to share all of our stories, but there's definitely some sketchy life changing mm-hmm. decisions that were discussed. But, um, but you know, that's, that's what, that's what, if, if we're going to go into business, like you sit on the board of some companies. There's no doubt this is a, like boards are having this discussion now, right? Somebody mm-hmm. like, cause you don't want you, your brand. Can you imagine if, if you walk in tomorrow and one of your companies say, Hey, we're getting this. And they're like, Hey, we're going to, we have to let 900, we got to let 743 people go. I can only imagine what would be going through your head at the time. I'd probably get a text like, Hey, for the next three or four days, I'm out. Like I, I gotta focus, and I, and you would, you would, you would lean in. It's like, hey, no, we, we, we have to make sure we do this right. And that, that number is so big that w- would you just wake up tomorrow and realize you got you overhired 900? Like There's no way, strategically, no way. that's just bad. Some bad leadership, some bad bets, bad bets, and there's no accountability for that in that communication. That's what's wrong. Like. I, I part of me is just toyed with this whole idea. And I know we talked about last time, like I want to go through clip by clip and translate how I, what, what we just learned from that. And another way that we could have handled saying that. Um, and, and part of it's like, you know, anytime a business goes off the rails like that, that's a lead, leadership made some bad choices. And as yeah. I told you last time, I bet you most of the people let go weren't leaders. I bet you they yeah. were all individual contributors who didn't have had very little say into why those 900 people were, you know, mishired or, you know, in the, in the wrong place. And that's just, that's disappointing. I know it's probably not relevant, but I don't know if you had the same thought, but you and I recently had a discussion with some folks in another country and it, it, it like gave me a flashback to some of their culture and letting people go before they vest like in retirement and Mm -hmm. some of these different things. And it's like, oh man, like, uh, is that what we just witnessed in our own country? Like, is that what we just witnessed? We see this in major league sports, Shane, right? Yeah. Yeah. This guy or girl scores X number of points. We got to kick in number of another few million dollars. Like time to trade them (laughs) or they're going to take Taysom Hill, Taysom Hill, the backup quarterback for the, for the new Orleans saints. It has a forty-three million dollar contract if he becomes the starting quarterback and has X number of passing attempts. If he doesn't, his contract's only worth like seven million dollars. Uh-huh. So, like, how that kicks in? Like, now, yeah, he okay. You could say, well, he negotiated the contract. He did that. Yes, he, but our uh, money plays a factor in decision making, right? If we like, we know that. So. You know, and it's always going to be, and listen, I know that's business. Hey, there are some things, as mm-hmm. Al Davis once said, it's the business, baby. Like, I get it. Like, I, I, I totally understand. Yeah. But we can be a human. We can be better humans. We can be more human in the future of work and how we lead and how we let go. Because letting go is still leading. And I think maybe that's where... Yep. There's a disconnect. So. Yep. And that's a perfect ending for, for this, for this chat. I mean, we could go on oh. and on and there's other pieces that are going to surface, but, uh, but yeah, I, I wanted to get into this because there's so, there's so many dimensions and trade-offs and challenges. And when you're growing at hyperspeed, it's not a perfect, you're not building the perfect organization. Everything's in motion and it's really, really hard. Yeah. But if your first inclination, when you have to make a hard decision is to do it, Align with what the lawyers say and what your fears are versus what's right for the people. You're you're missing out. And as I said on my LinkedIn post, all your employees saw just what you did. They just saw how you handled yeah. that. They don't think if you think for a second, they're not thinking when their number comes up or that they could be shot in the dark metaphorically and lose their job out of nowhere. They absolutely are. 
everyone yeah. is at everybody every even the level. people closest to you that you're having yep. to trust to make really hard decisions yeah yep. Yep. that's tough that's tough it, it, yeah. this and we'll wrap it up but this reminded me i felt like it could have been an episode of silicon valley the show on hbo yeah like yeah this is like this is yeah. it's almost unbelievable it's like but if the show was still running there's no doubt this would be a part of it indeed so. indeed all right, well, man. Well, it's been another. It's been another good discussion, Shane. I learned so much. We we have these talks and enjoy doing this with you. Yeah, man. This is uh, it's good. I'm glad to be back on a on a regularly regularly scheduled output. And uh, the next one will be off this topic, and we'll be on to something else a little bit uh, a little bit more serious. Maybe we'll have some guests, or who knows what we'll bring together. Okay. So all right. Well. That's been another episode of the Work Week After Hours. I am Shane Howard with my partner and dear friend, Steve Gadigan. And we'll see you guys next time.